Greetings all, I hope this new lore installment finds everyone well and ready to dig into some juicy Hollow Nest history. Today we're going to be talking about the Mantis Village and the mysteries that surround it. The Mantis Village is an area you find in the fungal wastes, and it's one of the areas that bridge the wastes to the Deep Nest, one of the creepiest zones in the entirety of the kingdom. Now, thankfully, we're not going to be spending much time in there because I hate that place. But for now, I want to focus on a facet of Hollow Nest that doesn't get much attention, which is the origin, the purpose, and the eventual schism that took place in the enigmatic Mantis tribe. The tribe of Mantises occupy two of the zones in the kingdom, being the Fungal Wastes and the Queen's Gardens. Now why this is the case, we'll get to in a bit. The Mantis Village houses a tribe of skilled, organized fighters. Their technology may not be as advanced as that seen in the city, but its architecture is certainly not primitive. The effort that went into the village structures is glaringly evident. The Mantis Warriors are a resilient, intelligent species of bug, and Quarrel himself even feels intimidated by the idea of facing the tribe lords. He warns you that the warriors of this tribe are much unlike the Husk Warriors in the city. The members of the Mantian tribe were considered the outsiders of the Hollow Nest Kingdom, and were shown very little respect. Much of the kingdom thought that their means of hunting and just going about their life were primal and unsophisticated. It was only when the infection took hold of the kingdom did the tribe relocate deeper into the veins of Hollow Nest, taking shelter in the southernmost portion of the wastes. And there they built their own structures, schemed their own defense plans, and even established their own form of government, overseen by four appointed lords of the tribe. It's even said in the Hunter's Journal that the Mantis tribe and the bugs of Hollow Nest are pretty divided, having no love for each other's way of life. But of course, their relocation to the Wastes was ultimately what set them apart from their rivals, and their civilization to this day remains unscathed by any infection. If you do some digging around the village, you can find some lore tablets that point to a possible business relationship these two societies had with each other. It can be found that the Mantis Lords once had a deal with the higher-ups of Hollow Nest, and that the Mantis tribe was responsible for guarding the throne room entrance to the Deep Nest. The Lords stood guarding the door to prevent any unsolicited visitors from entering the kingdom. Further proof of this is that if you access the Deep Nest through the throne room door after fighting the Lords, the first thing you see are piles of bug corpses and empty shells. Judging by the weapons bearing similarity to the Lords, it's really no doubt that these beasts likely met their end attempting to attack the tribe and make their way into the kingdom. Doesn't really look like they've succeeded yet. Unlike the now corrupted bugs of Hollow Nest, the Mantis Warriors still show signs of their sanity. If you defeat the Mantis Lords prior to entering the Deep Nest, the Mantis Warriors throughout the village will no longer engage you and will instead bow to you in the same manner that the Lords did. You can either walk right past them, or if you're vindictive like I am, choose to attack them if you happen to need some extra geo. The infection has not reached this far into the kingdom as of yet, and a lot of the Mantis Warriors still retain their sense of self, even if that sense of self is highly defensive and very, very afraid of any outsiders. The Mantis tribe thrived after the kingdom was largely consumed by the infection brought on by the Radiance, but only for a while. Something is interesting about the throne room in the Mantis village. There are actually four thrones, but one of them has been dismantled, seemingly on purpose by the rest of the lords. The original entourage consisted of four lords that guarded the village from Deep Nest's evil. Eventually, that changed pretty quickly after the infection. One of the lords became infatuated by the infection's power, and though he remained uncorrupted by it for a while, he still sought the power given by the infection to other bugs in the kingdom. Soon, a thirst for power became the only thing worth thinking about. Noticing this, the remaining three lords banished him from the village, and the fourth lord remained exiled in the vegetation of the gardens to the west. He did have followers, however. A lot of previous members of the Mantis tribe also wanted to embrace the infection, and so when the fourth lord was banished, a good portion of the tribe followed him to the gardens. This created a huge divide between the village, whereas the Mantis tribe and the Wastes clung to their fundamental values of order and structure in their land, 
The exiled mantises of the West sought power over their enemies and embraced the infection to the point where they too were eventually driven mad. What's odd is, usually the infection has a tendency to reduce any bug that's corrupted by it down to primal instinct, but this small grouping of mantises have managed to build their own village within the bristles of the gardens. It's something I haven't seen happen to any other species of bug in Hallownest. Even with the infection, they still somehow manage to retain their means of civility and teamwork. As defined by the entry in the Hunter's Journal, the Traitor Lord was the fourth lord of the Mantis tribe, until he ended up growing curious about the infection's power and wanted to take it inside of him, to gain supremacy over his enemies. And sadly, this ultimately brought forth his own corruption as well, and now he and his followers all reside deep in the gardens to the west, living in exile as punishment for the treachery against his sister lords. The Hunter's Journal entry talks about the Hunter's own desire to take the infection into himself, and that it's a false hope, even if the temptation does burn brilliantly in one's mind. The Traitor Lord's size has swelled noticeably, and the game doesn't really have any leads on whether or not this was a byproduct of the infection, but discrepancies between the Mantis Lords and the Traitor Lord does include its massive size as well as its use of claws in lieu of any sort of nail-based weapon. Maybe the grip of the infection has greatly reduced its ability to use any sort of actual blade, and so the Lord has resorted to more primitive offensive tactics. When you reach the Traitor Lord in the Queen's Gardens, he has already been lost to the infection for quite some time, but his attacks still remain lethal and it's best to keep your distance as much as you can when fighting. If you interacted with the Cicada Warrior Cloth in the Fungal Wastes and follow her through to the Deep Nest, the Basin, and then finally the Gardens, she will show up to help you against the Traitor Lord in the climax of the fight. So let's jump back a little to when this schism first happened. No one is really sure whether or not this was the ultimate cause of the tribe's divide, but I'm pretty sure this happened after the Mantis Traders relocated to the Gardens. Now I'm sure you're familiar with the delicate flower quest that you must take all the way from the resting grounds to the east and travel across the map to deliver the flower to this grave. The gravestone reads, Here lies a traitor's child. This is huge because this insinuates two things. One, that this relationship between the Grey Mourner and this mysterious child was romantic in some sorts. And two, this child was the daughter of the Fourth Lord, the traitor of the tribe. As expected, the Lord did not take kindly to this relationship due to the Grey Mourner being unfamiliar with the tribe's customs. The tribe overtly disapproved of their relationship and labeled the Grey Mourner as an outsider. Now, his daughter's cause of death is also unspecified by anything in the game, so this might mean she was executed due to her questionable relationship? Information having to do with this relationship in the game is extremely sparse, and this was all presumably before the infection overtook the village and the gardens. No what happened during and after the infection has proven to be a little harder to dig up. If you watch one of our previous lore installments, you'll know that Fierce Drea, one of the five great knights of Hallownest, lies deceased outside of the Queen's chambers in the gardens. The mutinous behavior of the Mantis tribe in the gardens became volatile, and the Mantis warriors started up the gardens in a full stop assault against the Queen. Drea, one of the five knights, presumably died defending the queen against all the savagery, evidenced by the path of dead mantises pointing to Drea's corpse, leaning beside the chamber of the queen. If you speak with the queen inside her chamber, it doesn't even sound as though she's aware of Drea's sacrifice. Wearing the defender's crest, the queen thinks of you as Ogrim, another one of the five, and asks you about Drea. She asks whether or not you saw her on the way into her chambers, and even speaks on Drea's behalf in that she would much enjoy a night's reunion. It's actually kinda sad knowing she's not aware of Drea's death. Now, Drea did not make it into the game alive and was actually intended to be a really climactic boss fight for the player, as evidenced by Team Cherry's Kickstarter description for Drea, one of Hallownest's five great knights and defender of the Queen's Glade. 
She was driven mad by her queen lost and the garden overrun. Still, she retains her honor, offering fair challenge to the Hollow Knight. Nail against nail, a duel to the death. Now, this heavily insinuates that Drea was meant to be an opponent for the young knight, but for some reason, things and development changed. And Drea, as well as almost all of the other knights, were cut from actual gameplay. Maybe a future dream battle they have in store for us? Somewhat similar to the White Defender in the Hidden Dreams update? I can't speak for Team Cherry, obviously, but I think including Drea as a dream fight later on in another expansion would be a pretty solid idea. Anyways, back on topic to the Mantis Tribes. I've poked around the wiki pages, the game itself, and other sources, and I've found no presumed reason as to why the Western Mantises would attack the Queen and ignite such a mutiny. So the only sensible conclusion was that it simply was a byproduct of the infection's grasp. After all, that would kind of make sense because a percentage of Mantis warriors did follow the fourth exiled Lord to the gardens prior to their infection, meaning they would have arrived there with their wits and their sanity, or at least before they were taken away. Some other indications of the Mantis's intellect is that they are one of very few bosses you actually have to initiate yourself by challenging them. The battle itself is also one of the few that contains multiple enemies, and they also do not die. They know to retreat from their opponent when they have been weakened, which is a tactic no other boss or enemy I believe shares in the game. Dream nailing the other Mantis warriors in the Fungal Wastes also will give you different results, depending on your current status with the Mantis Lords. If you haven't defeated them, their thoughts are obviously hostile, saying things like, We honor the Lords. Intruders shall end. Their disposition will change after you challenge and defeat the Lords, and you'll get dialogue lines such as, Great Warrior, the Lords accept it, or Honor from an Outsider. How rare. The Mantian tribe shows evidence of intellect even during gameplay. Go for the Mark of Pry charm before you defeat the Lords, and one of the warriors will not even try to attack you. He'll just close the gate right in front of your face. Obviously, no demonstration of primitive behavior here. Dream nailing the Mantis warriors in the western portion of Hallow Nest will yield very different results. The infection has driven them to primeval instinct, and their simple dialogue reflects this. And finally, before we wrap this thing up, I thought it would include what I found to be a really interesting fact stated by the Embraced One in the official Hollow Knight wiki page. In response to a comment from another user, he clarified the gender of the Mantis Lords and the traitor. Up until version 1031, all four of the Lords were considered to be female, until a 1032 update that labeled the traitor Mantis as male. Now, this is actually really interesting to me, because if you study praying Mantis and sex in real life, the female Mantis anatomy is much larger, with a longer body segment. Anatomically, at least, it does seem like the traitor Lord Mantis would be the only female of the group because the anatomy of the traitor is much larger. Now this also could have something to do with the infection, as I said before. This contains nothing pertinent to the lore of the game, this is just something I thought was really cool and wanted to point out. The Mantian tribe outlasted their rivals in Hollow Nest due to their supreme intellect, lethality, and ability to adapt to their surroundings. All of these were abilities the bugs of Hollow Nest were not born with and instead they had to be trained to kill and use weapons. The Mantian warriors were already prepared when the infection came for them. Unfortunately, not all of the warriors resisted its temptation, leading to a great schism as well of the death of one of Hollow Nest's greatest knights. Thanks for tuning in to The Forge. We've got a lot more Hollow Knight lore planned for the future, as the followers of this channel have all been extremely vocal on what videos they would like to see. So as to follow suit with these requests, a lot more energy will be devoted to this branch of content. In the meantime, please ring the bell and take a look at some of our other lore videos. I'll see you next time.